Video has been transforming for years. Just like LPs, 8-tracks, and cassette tapes, each replaced the other, only to be replaced by the CD, which is disappearing in favor of cell phones and tablets. The equipment the Video Producers Club started with was state-of-the-art at the time. Cameras, tripods, microphones, as well as battery packs you wore like a belt. All this could weigh 40 pounds or more. They recorded the tape like the kind your VCR used to use. Remember your VCR? The editing was done on a machine called the Casablanca, a system that cost thousands of dollars and didn't do more than digital editing programs that are available for free now on your computer like Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. This year, the club was fortunate to submit a successful proposal for a grant to the Recreation Committee to upgrade some of our equipment. We also received new cameras, tripods, and accessories from the Seal Beach Cable Communications Foundation. Now a typical field kit of camera, tripod, mic, and batteries weighs less than 10 pounds. Our club space is divided in two, a production side and a post-production or editing side. We can do interviews and other in-studio shoots at the green screen production side. Later in post-production editing, we can use chroma key effects and as a video maker can have the subject appear to be anywhere we want them to be. Here's an example. I've muted this clip so there won't be any lip syncing. I'm going to demonstrate the green screen for you. Here I've eliminated the green screen by selecting it with the chroma key in the editing program. Now I'll show you myself with several different backgrounds. Here's a beautiful sunset. Here, I'm a crime scene reporter. This is an all-purpose background. I'm reporting on the financial crisis. I'm flying over New York City. I'm entering the twilight zone. Either that or the firing squad is taking aim. We also teach regular classes in video editing, camera operation, use of YouTube, interviewing techniques, and other topics as they come up. I've been with the club long enough to realize lots of changes. And of course, change is a sign of life. Right now, there are so many changes. This club is absolutely being transformed in its, um, its focus. We have a much larger room than when we when I first started with the club, um, we were in the um, security office up by the um, amphitheater. We had half of his, um, you know, half of a counter, and that was it. And uh, we had to stow things, and oh, it was quite a job to manage that small space. Uh, then we moved to a new space in this uh, Clubhouse 5, and eventually when the uh, new building came into existence. The exercise room, which had been partly this space, moved to Clubhouse 6, and this space became ours. And uh, so we had more space. We were able to set up uh, a library of our old uh, tapes. Uh, some of them are three-quarter inch tapes at the start. 
So the, the difference in the in how we store material is is one of the areas that definitely changed. Uh, my cameras, my another thing is using personal equipment. Uh, at the beginning, I think that all the shows were made with equipment owned by the cable uh, Seal Beach Cable Communications Foundation. But now, uh, over the years, uh, people have gotten their own equipment. Once again, at this time, it's possible to produce a good show using equipment that is available through the club, either through the uh, either given by the recreation department or by the Seal Beach Cable Communication. Anyway, as I say, um, the state of the state of this club is that it's alive because it's changing. And the changes are good for the community as a whole because there are more, uh, there's more of an idea in the club that you're going to uh, help people uh, do some of the things you know how to do. You're not going to do things for people, but you can uh, demonstrate some skills that will be useful to the general public here in Leisure World uh, if they want to put in the time and the effort to learn a new skill. Um, the, uh, the first show I did was uh, my passion. Uh, I had a, a plant expert on. And uh, I brought in, I, I went to Breda, Breda's downtown and brought in real plants to have on the stage. And um, uh, I thought it was going to be just wonderful. The fact is, real plants don't show up as well as silk flowers or something like that. So anyway, uh, but the idea that um, video producers, that these, you know, you're an independent public access producer and so you can choose what you want to do with your time and uh, what you want to introduce to the public and uh, plants, trees, uh, that sort of thing have been my uh, interest. I, I did a show on, uh, on trees once. This past year, you did a nice uh, interview for us with the people from the library services. That is part of the, the gen, you know, that is a more common type of show on Inside Leisure World, is not only uh, introducing uh, important elements of the community uh, and helping open doors, but also to do life story, you know, to have someone on who has interesting story to tell about their life. Kate Pettigo hosted a show in which she had a, a man who, uh, who was a rollerblader. He was in his 90s and he had just returned from Fiji where he had won a comp competition in rollerblading for his age group. But he also taught lessons in the parking lot in front of the health care center uh, with uh, shopping carts to help people <laughs> learn to rollerblade. He was passionate about it. And that was an interesting life story uh, sort of uh, show. But yes, uh, interviewing the, the librarian, uh, interviewing uh, the security officers, uh, and interviewing our administrators, uh, interviewing the history, uh, historical society uh, officers, uh, those kinds of shows are common on, on Inside Leisure World, and they, uh, they serve a, a good purpose. Hi, I'm Bill Frombach. I've been a member of the Video Producers Club for, I estimate, 15 years. I'm not really sure exactly how long. But uh, that's a pretty good guess. Uh, I've enjoyed it very much. I've enjoyed the, the, the members of the club. 
there's a good natured joviality among all of us. We, we tease one another and we laugh together a lot. Uh, one of the th things that I have done is I have been the host of the, of the show, the, the show that we put on uh, several times in the past. Uh, most recently was this past summer I hosted the Y Service Club. I introduced them and they discussed what the Y Service Club does, what it means, and what its mission is. And that again is a group of very nice people who are, are, are fun, fun to be with. It's not really difficult to be a, a, a host uh, because there are a lot of people who will help you. First of all, oh, right now I'm just sitting here talking to you. It looks like I'm the only one on the show, but there is support. There's, it always takes support people. And when we put on the Inside Leisure World, there's a support crew of about, of about eight who, who do the various functions of getting the, getting the, the, the show put, put together. Uh, among the, most of the members of that crew are members of this club. Sometimes there are people come from an, another group, which is also it's the, what we call it the downtown group. It's a good idea to be prepared a little bit to, to be a host. And what I have done each time is to make some notes as to the points that I want to cover and to arrange to have pictures. It's, it's nice to have pictures. It gives the message better. If you're talking about something, you can show them a picture. And you, you, what you do is you just prepare your pictures ahead of time. I won't get into the technical parts of it, but just line up the pictures. You can also have video clips. The shows are about a half hour, uh, slightly less than that, but call it a half hour. And it's surprising how fast that time goes. You've done several dozen of these shows over the years, right? Yes, I've done other shows, yes. And you've also crewed, right? I crewed, I crewed much more than I've been a host. What, what positions have you crewed at? Well, let's see, I, have, I, I think I've crewed just about every position Correction: I have not. I have not been the sound person, but I, and I, of course, I have not been the director, which is always Robin Fort Linky. But I think I've done every other position. Uh, the, the people we need people for three cameras on those shoots. And sometimes we we don't have enough people, so the center camera is one which just covers the general show, it doesn't need to be pointed very much. So we have a, several crew members we use for these. One of his name is Stan Still, and uh, <laughs> there, there's a, another one who is often, he's a very faithful person, he, his name is Noah Body. So when, usually those people take, take their place. The, the other two positions, do require some readjustment and the way the structure works is Robin Fort Linky is in the control booth and she gives instructions to the camera operators through a little uh, private telephone line shall we say so they say point to this and zoom in on that and that sort of thing but the center camera that's no body and stand still operate uh, doesn't doesn't move so that job is one that can, can be replaced. We also have a floor director. That's someone who is in charge of keeping track of the time and waving the signs and making motions so that the person who is the host can keep track of what is what has to be done next. And then there's also a, a, uh, a timer which is visible to the, to the host. So all these things make it really pretty easy to be a host. Now, it's okay to have notes. Don't worry about having to memorize anything. Just have notes and look at it. That's perfectly all right. Uh, and with respect to your guests, if they want to have notes, tell them, sure, bring them along, whatever they want. Uh, it's a good idea to line up your guests pretty far in advance 
because sometimes things happen where they drop out and you don't have enough. I have found that it's difficult to interview one person, but two or three is, is, is good. Uh, I prefer interviewing two people. The value of that is you can switch back and forth from one person to the other, and while you're talking to one, the other one is collecting his or her thoughts, and they may have a, a, have a desire to correct something which they said earlier. So that gives them a chance to, to make a better presentation of what they had in mind. It also makes them more comfortable to have a little rest. The host, unfortunately, has to work all, the, whole, the whole time. Uh, the camera is on the host when the host speaks, but the, the purpose of being a host is to hear what the other people have to say, not for the host to make a speech. So the best hosting is, is asking questions and drawing out of the, the people who are being interviewed what it is that, uh, that they have to say. I'm one of the uh, video producers of the Video Producers Club here in Leisure World, Seal Beach, California. What's important about the Inside Leisure World program? It brings to a good light clubs and people that are associated with Leisure World. You know, I, for instance, a club, all the good stuff that a club does, all the neat stuff a club does, and, uh, and also interesting people and their history as to what they've done in their life and how they, they reside here in Leisure World. So that's the exciting part about Inside Leisure World. You've hosted the show several times. What, uh, you're pretty comfortable doing it now. How did you feel at first when you first started doing it? Well, at first you're a little nervous, but I'm used to talking in public and stuff like that. I've talked when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. I used to talk to assemblies that had a thousand kids in the assembly, so I was used to talking to kids and people. So that hasn't been a problem. But usually you have a little uh, hesitation or intimidation at the very first of something new. But after that, it's, it's easy. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, talking to each other, just normal human beings having a conversation just like you and I are having right now. And uh, who have you interviewed this year, um, in 2013? In 2013, I've forgotten already. But I can tell you some of the ones that have come to mind though in the, in the past. I interviewed a uh, nurse who was on a secret mission by the Navy to be the, uh, the personal nurse of one of, the, uh, one of the wives of the president actually President Ford. Uh, Betty Ford had a, uh, an issue of, uh, I think, medication as well as alcoholism. And so the Navy had a secret project in which to uh, have her rehab through the President's orders. And this particular nurse lives here in Leisure World. And she was on that mission and she was successful. And that not even her mom knew about it, but her mom eventually found out. Uh, things like that. Interviewed uh, the gentleman that was uh, the bombing of uh, Japan in World War II, the atomic bomb was dropped in uh, Japan on Hiroshima. Well, this gentleman that was, uh, that didn't, didn't drop the bomb, the uh, bomb was uh, dropped by the bomber, the Enola Gay. Before the bomber got there, there were other bombers ahead of the Enola Gay that were the weather uh, uh, bombers, uh, observers. So the primary target was socked in. This is the guy that was on that uh, a pilot on that weather plane that says, uh, and brings back to the Enola Gay, this primary target is socked in. Let's go to the secondary target. They went to the secondary target and they found a break in the clouds and that's where the Enola Gay dropped its atomic bomb. So the first atomic bomb was not the primary target. It was a secondary target. Not too many people know that. This gentleman wrote a book on it. Uh, he's a, a dentist and he lives here in Leisure World. So people like that, uh, guys that have broken the world uh, record, uh, Guinness world record for continuous uh, basketball uh, hoops. Guy lives here in Leisure World. 
things like that. Uh, people that have been captured by, uh, in World War II by the Nazis or, not, or German uh, soldiers, not Nazis, German soldiers, and their experiences uh, in uh, camps. Uh, actually interviewed a gentleman that was in the Nazi party that lives here in Leisure World as well. And uh, he told me all about that and the various levels of the Nazi party and his uh, experiences. I've talked to guys that were in the German army and now they're, and they, after the war, joined the American army. So we have this gentleman was a German soldier war, uh, fighting against the Americans in World War II. And then when he gets to America, he joins the American army. Uh, but it's not still World War II, but he's a, a soldier for, the, for America now. Interesting stuff. So it's, it's not a personal uh, war that he was in. He was involved, it was government against government. He was just a foot soldier. Uh, so all that stuff is so interesting here in Leisure World. It's incredible, the experience that is collectively uh, existing here in Leisure World that we have no idea what it is yet. Now, stuff like that, so that makes it interesting. I th one of your interviews this year was Galit, the rabbi. That's right, thanks. How did that interview go? It went well. She's a very interesting uh, lady. I uh, really like Galit. Uh, she uh, is a rabbi now, uh, one of our first lady rabbis here in Leisure World. And uh, she has a, uh, a congregation here. And she's an entertainer as well. An all around uh, uh, lady uh, that's done great here in Leisure World for, uh, for herself as well as for the community. So, one of, she was the most interesting gal I had done uh, this year so far. Yeah. Well, the Video Producers Club has been evolving. When it first started, they had this ancient equipment of huge cameras, huge battery packs that you had to carry around. And now we have this miniaturized, miniaturization of uh, camcorders that you can hold in your hand and just weigh under a pound. Uh, so what, what I'd like to see is it evolved uh, into uh, capturing more uh, video because now it's easier to uh, bring uh, video equipment into uh, an event. The Video Producers Club is looking forward to 2014. Come and join us if you like. We're located in Clubhouse 5 on the ground floor at the northwest corner of the building. <laughs>